Good evening, Drew. We can finally record a podcast. Yeah, how about that? Uh, mm. I'm so sorry, buddy. It has That's been right. it has been an eventful few days for okay. your your friend Drew. You you want to talk about it? We can talk about it in the second half of the show because okay. I want to okay. I want to hear about Paul stuff first. <laughs> okay. Um, I had follow up and I forgot to write it down. Shoot. Okay. There, I I had like some very important follow up for the show from things we talked about last time and i'm looking at the show notes right now trying to remember what it was we talked about shoot man oh 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 oh. two two pieces of follow-up um first and foremost Mm -hmm. um friend of the show eric darling i received a series of texts from him Uh oh exclaiming to me that all of the problems that you described with your opal camera he also mm-hmm. experienced oh okay i don't know if there's a direct correlation i mean my i mean works on my machine is is something that i think i can say here but mine seems to work okay, okay. i really really don't know why you guys had so many problems but hey shit happens right um but i, I he did want me to make it abundantly clear to you that he was having the same problems well uh, if he wants to spend another three hundred dollars, three hundred dollars on a webcam, I highly recommend the Instalink three hundred and sixty. Everything is, working good for you. It is fantastic. Mm. Mm. It's good. It's good. Okay. Yeah. He uh, he was he was finally caught up on the show because he he had to go to okay. Boston and he was okay. drunk on a train and he <laughs> was telling us how much he appreciates our podcast. Oh, thanks, and, buddy. And I said and I said, have, and I, said I on the show sometime. <laughs> And I said, I also have to get drunk to enjoy certain things. <laughs> um, but no, he, well, he assured yeah, us yeah. it had nothing to do with that. Okay, okay. Uh, the other quick piece of follow-up was I did go ahead and buy that additional license for the Synology Security Station. Okay. And it was fine. Like, fine? Okay. Uh, I was a little confused because I basically had to buy a software code. I could not figure out how to get a digital code through Amazon. They literally mailed me a small little envelope with numbers in it. <laughs> I, I mean, Synology's great at a lot of things. You think they would have a way to digitally purchase That's this. adorable. Yeah, I ordered it on a Tuesday, and it, it, it a small little Amazon package showed up on my door. It was a little, like... Just like any other software card you've ever gotten, like I had to like break the seal and then open it up and then type in all the numbers. I Synology, come on, you got to make it easier than that. Uh, but once I put the code in, I was able to add my third camera and everything was fine. Okay, on to new business. Mm-hmm. You have things and I have things, and yeah. I think everybody is waiting to hear my thing. So. <laughs> Why don't we get my my stupid shit out of the well, way? Well, I mean, yeah, I think yeah, if yeah. if if I know anything about producing a show, we got to make the people wait. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Okay. You got to wait for the good stuff. Yep. Uh, I made uh, a bit of an impulse purchase. Uh, really? Last yeah, last week. Last week after the show, I think the reviews came out last Friday. Anywho. A bunch of reviews dropped for the new Beats Studio Pro wireless headphones. Uh, they are over-the-ear Beats headphones. They are wireless. They are noise-canceling. Uh, they are $350. I ordered myself a pair. And uh, while they're not as feature-rich as the AirPods Max, these don't hurt my head, and therefore I like them much better. <laughs> They're much better, much better, Drew, much better. Uh, you know what? Have you heard of anything about these suckers? I have been under the impression, and if I'm wrong, I'm willing to admit that I'm wrong, that Beats is garbage headphones for garbage people. So there was a period of time when Beats was absolutely garbage. Uh, since Apple owns them now, uh, the quality has gotten a lot better. A lot of people really like their uh, the Beats uh, earbuds. Uh, honestly, like a lot of the same, in- like a lot of the internals are the same internals as like the AirPods. Uh, a lot of the same guts on the inside. Mm-hmm. Uh, and these are, I mean, these are these are fine. Yeah, it's is. I mean, 
the, if I had one complaint, let's see if I can get this on mic here. I don't know if you can hear that. That sounds like some clicky plastic. Yeah, they're made out of plastic, and if you kind of twerk them, they tweak a little bit. But again, uh, they're plastic, so they're light and comfortable to wear. Mm -hmm. uh, the noise canceling is good. Uh, the transparency mode is fine. It's not as good as like the AirPods Maxes, but it's fine. Uh, and they don't they don't hurt me. They've got buttons, physical buttons that you can press, which I like. I like being able to push a button to make the volume go up. Or push a button to pause it. It's good. Versus uh, versus the crown. Versus the crown. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the, they don't have ear detection. You have to turn them on and off with a button like an animal. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the, the, the EQ is the typical beats like V, all bass, all, all treble, no mids. Uh, oh. while, while it's not my ideal eq it's fun it's fun it's it's punchy <laughs> it's just it's it's fun like yeah it's not perfect and yeah sometimes you know the vocals kind of get drowned out but drowned drowned that's the word drowned drowned out uh the, i got the blue pair the good i wore them when i mowed the lawn they didn't hurt my head they sound good well they sound they sound fun they sound fun it's good so if you're looking for something like a noise care of noise canceling headphones and you don't want to spend five hundred dollars on uh that's how much they cost now. Five hundred dollars. The AirPods Max or are they four fifty? I don't know. They're cheap. Uh, it depends on where you buy them. I mean, yeah. I Micro Center seems to have them perpetually on sale. That's where I bought mine. Yeah. But uh, either way, they're they're cheaper. They're cheaper, and uh, oh, they're five hundred and forty nine dollars. Uh, so they're two hundred dollars less through Apple. I yes. Take it. Yeah. Yeah. Two hundred dollars less. So there you go. Headphones. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I have mm -hmm. okay. so many questions. Oh, okay. 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 So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So Micro Center, just real time follow up. Micro Center has them for four sixty nine. Okay, that's a better Which, price, but still hundred dollars. It's, a, it's more. a better price, yeah. but it's not so much. Yeah. So, I was my first question was going to be which color you got. I got the blue because because I know you wouldn't have gone for brown. Like I immediately wrote off brown. Uh, actually, uh, I, oh, no. I was going to do the brown, then at the last minute decided for the navy. Wow, I I. It, the more I record podcasts with you, the more I realize I don't know you. I would have never pegged you as a brown boy. Yeah, I I, I think the brown looks kind of I think the brown looks kind of sexy. I like, would have I would have thought you would have gone for sandstone. I see. I I, ha I have a light pair of headphones, and that was a huge mistake because humans are gross. Yeah, there's uh, your so, filth gets everywhere. So yeah, I went with the navy. Yeah, <sighs> navy navy would have been my second mm -hmm. my second choice. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's tried and true black. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, tell me about the case. Oh yeah, so they okay, so th that's that's another cool thing. So, uh, unlike the AirPods Max, these fold up, uh, and it comes it comes packed in this little this little Beats case. Uh, okay, you know how big is the case? Uh, maybe okay, maybe about five inches long, three inches high, two inches wide. Okay, yeah. Uh, you it's got inside of the case, it's got a USB C cable. And it's got a aux cable because you can actually plug cables into this phone and use it wired. Huh. Uh, which oh, I, hold on. Which hold I hold on. Tried, hold but, on. Uh, to be fair, mm -hmm. I can do that with my Macs. I okay. have to buy a very yes. special cable yes. to do it. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and it but charges with USB-C. USB-C. <laughs> oh. Well, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I can but my AirPods Max can charge with USB C. Yeah, but but it's a lightning plug on, 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 one, on one end. end. Yeah, yeah. This is USB C on the on the headphones. Yeah, my Sony's like that actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Did you buy these in a store? No, I ordered them from Apple and had them delivered. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you didn't. So you you had had you seen them before? Or tried no. Them on before? No. If I didn't like them, I was gonna send them back. Uh. Yeah, as as is your as is your want. Mm -hmm. But I like them. I'm gonna keep them. I'm actually using them as kind of my meeting headphones instead of my AirPods Max now. Uh, and I use. So them can can we talk about that for a minute? Mm -hmm. Can we talk about that for a minute? Mm -hmm. Are you 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 have a new camera? I do. So you probably join all your meetings via video. Mm -hmm. I have very mixed feelings about people joining meetings wearing big headphones. <laughs> I, I just, I feel like the classy move is a very discreet headset or AirPods. Nah. Blech. It's very, it's very, well, 
I'm spoiled because at my company, everybody has a MacBook. Okay. So I feel like you're sort of in the Apple ecosystem. I have seen people with the Beats. Mm -hmm. There's a very, very few select people that have Maxes. I see a lot of people with like the typical teleconferencing headsets, which I'm just like, oh, honey. Yeah. You can't. You can't do that yeah. anymore. I, I don't know. I, I don't have a problem with that. Like, get the microphone but, but next to the, your mouth. Sound but good. But are the microphones are the microphones as good? Well, even a shitty microphone's good if it's close to your mouth. So, <sighs> there's a title in there somewhere. <laughs> I'm sure it's close to their mouth. Um, I don't know. I call me a snob, and by the end of this by the end of this episode, you absolutely will call me a snob. Um for reasons uh <laughs> okay yeah i i i just i don't like seeing people with big headsets on conference calls oh it doesn't bother me one bit i feel like a lot of people also use the built-in microphones of their laptops too much yes i, I to me what bothers me is the people that just use like the speakers and and microphone like built into their webcam or their monitor or their laptop right. no headphones at all just just dependent on that uh you know uh noise cancellation so you don't get feedback loops yeah that yeah uh, yeah I, that i don't like that not but, a fan mm -mm, mm -mm. but a lot of people do it so whatever i don't know so they're and, good and you said they're over ear or on ear they're over uh technically they're kind of on ear uh, but my ears are also big, so. You do have very beautiful ears. One of, one of your nicest traits, if I'm being honest. Okay, all right. Thank watch, you. Yeah. watch Beat Studio Pro behind the design. Yeah, hmm. they're good. Okay, I, be I, mean, if, I, if, I believe you. Yeah, if you're looking for something in the kind of Apple ecosystem that doesn't have all the features of the AirPods Max, but it's $200 cheaper, there you go, Beat Studio Pro. There's lots of good reviews out there. Uh and they're they're light and they fold up and they don't hurt my head. So ta da. Okay. Yeah. And like, do you think they're gonna be durable? I think so. I mean I mean, yeah, they're plastic, but it's not like it's like they don't feel cheap. Okay, but I I'm sorry to have to continue to bring this up. But what about your heavies? Well, the heavies are going to be for listening to music, not for like they're not noise cancel. I don't. Th I don't think they're noise canceling. Yeah, but I don't. You can never have too many headphones, Drew. You can definitely have too many <laughs> headphones, <laughs> especially when oh. you clean them with slime. I, 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 any word on the heavies yet? You said they were uh, in there, like shipping them out in waves. Yeah, I haven't got my shipping notification yet, so I'm just, God, I'm just kind of waiting. I'm just kind of waiting, waiting on the heavies. Uh, I really, I really want you to have them. I, I want them. I want them badly. I really want you to have them. All right. Uh, I'm happy for you. I would like to hear more about them. Okay. Um, you know, I I used to be all about that base, all that all about that base, no treble. But Oof. I'm in a period of my life now where I like other other types of frequencies and sounds. Okay. Um, okay. The, this next I, one, I, I the, really, I really this, don't want to talk about this. Okay, but this this next this next topic, Drew, came it was sent in by a listener, okay. by a friend of the show, friend of the show, Greg. Hi, Greg, you're not a coward. Yep. Uh, he he sent this in, mm. basically saying this is the perfect game for Drew. It is not. It is not <laughs> the perfect game for me. I hate this game. Okay, okay, okay. Actually, that makes me feel good. We're talking about PC building simulator, and when I first thought this, I was like. What in the hot fuck is this? <laughs> this seems awful. Have have you tried playing it? I have tried playing it. Okay, okay. And <sighs> it's it not it's not good. It's not good. So I mean, it's, it's got it's got corporate sponsors. What could go wrong? <laughs> okay, you, okay. So that a couple things here. So okay. we are talking about the computer game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a game. PC building mm -hmm. cool. simulator. It is mm -hmm. a game. The premise of this is twofold. Number one, if you are a PC hardware enthusiast, and I would like to think that I am, this game will definitely tickle parts of your brain. Okay? For a couple different reasons. Number one, when I was a young lad and I got done building my first computer and it worked, 
I felt invincible and I thought, wow, it would be great if I could do this for a living. This is what okay. this game attempts to do for you. You basically run a business where you can build custom PCs, turn around and sell them. You can work on them. Uh, and you have to like learn how to diagnose problems. It is a great thing if you meet two very specific criteria. You like the aspect of what it would be like to run a business where you build computers for people and where you fix computers for people. And you have the opportunity to play with hardware that you might not normally be able to use. So the premise is you start a business, someone brings you a computer, you have to fix it or replace the components. You have to go on your fake computer. You have to go, you have to use your computer to go on <laughs> another, you have to use your, you have to use your own little computer to play this game and to use another computer inside that game to order hardware to then to replace build the to build a computer. Computers. Yeah. There are official company tie-ins, mm -hmm. so I'm like seeing Corsair, that right now. lots of DLC. Yep. Yep. There's mm. there 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 is a lot of there's more DLC for this game than I remember. Um. <sighs> yeah, Overclockers UK Workshop, like all the big all all the big names that mm -hmm. I know. Yeah. Uh, Aura, you know, Gigabyte has an uh, ROG, which is Asus Razer, which is garbage. Uh, EVGA has one fractal design in their cases. Like, here's the thing, and I'm going to sound like a huge hypocrite. Okay. Now, I don't know if we need a special horn for this because I know it's happened before. But if you want to come up with your own special like sound effect for Drew <laughs> hypocrite time, <laughs> this oh, oh, okay, this okay. this game absolutely does not capture the spirit of working on a Interesting. Actually, not inter not actually. That's not surprising at all. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Now, Continue. I say this as somebody who plays Flight Simulator and thinks how cool it is to fly an airplane. I'm sure a pilot would tell me the same thing. I play Train Simulator, and I think that I'm God's gift to engineering, like the like the choo choo kind, not the like you know protractor kind. <laughs> and you know, I appreciate a good simulator game. This, on the other hand, is not very good because for a couple reasons one the actual physical building of a computer to me is fun like drew's computer corner aside and all the dumb shit that i've done in computers over the years like i i i do there is a part of me that enjoys it this is disconnected and and i gotta say like Credit where credit's due. Like, they do a lot of cool things in this game where, like, they actually take the software. Like, the same software that runs the uh, UEFI BIOS on my motherboard, because that is actual software, like, they can simulate that when you're building a ASUS-based motherboard computer and computer simulator. Um, it's, it's an interesting game. I don't like the business management aspect of it or whatever. Um, and it's a little tongue in cheek in places, but it's just, it's so desensitized for me about like what building a computer is. If that makes sense. I, I don't know if I'm making sense. I think you're making more sense than this, ge this game makes to me in, in concept. Well, okay. Uh, All right. Yeah, so yeah. I told you we're going to call me a snob. Here's your, here's your first opportunity of, I think we're going to be three opportunities to call me a snob tonight. Okay. I think there's a lot of people out there that like having a computer and you know build a computer within their means and within their budget and again i'm in a place in my life where if i want to buy a 4090 or i want to buy the most state-of-the-art intel like i'm blessed enough that i can go do that a lot of people can't right a lot of people will True. build a budget gaming pc to play fortnite or apex legends or call of duty or minecraft or whatever or like you know, it's their kid's first computer. They're not going to go out and spend thousands of dollars. They want to spend four or $500 tops to like put them in a computer together to do something. And like, you know, and I don't have kids, right? I'm just kind of speaking anecdotally for people that I know that have done this for their kids. It's like kids get hooked on computers, right? Like they, they like them. They want to be able to play with them more. They, you know, especially if it's a computer that their parents built for them. I think that there's maybe sometimes a desire to learn, wow, how did mom or dad do that? 
And I think this game can help spike that curiosity. But I think there's a danger in this game and making it look a little bit easier than it is. Like, I, I'm not going to use the word like PC building in, is an art here because I don't really think that's true. But you sort of have to know certain things. And while I think this game does an okay job of maybe teaching you like how to pick the right memory and how to pick the right processor for your motherboard, like I think it does a good job of that. Um, I, I just think it's so desensitized for what building a computer actually is because it's just point and click. It really takes a lot of that passion and that and that fundamental experience of building a computer and doing it, um, especially when it comes to like what happens after you're done building it. That's like one aspect of this game that I don't think they spend enough time on is like, OK, great. You built the computer and it powers on and like you get something to show up on your monitor okay, you're done. No, you're, you're so far from done. Like you have to be able to install an operating system and you know, have to figure out like what drivers need installed and all that other stuff. Like the hardware is the cool part, but like actually getting your computer set up to run every day or, you know, run optimally every day and, you know, adjusting your fan speeds and your temperatures, if you're me, and then like making all that stuff work together. Like there's, there's more to it than that, which is why, as cool as this game is, like if someone comes to me and says, Drew, I'm thinking about building a computer, I try to talk them out of it because it's a huge time suck. And unless you're me and you're the kind of person that really, really enjoys it, like there's so many great pre-built companies out there that will give you a great computer that should the mood strike you one day to upgrade it, you would have a path to do that. But, you know, actually doing what this game is kind of instructing you to do is still really time consuming and, and not necessarily hard, but not easy either. And I remember I was playing it and I was just like, I feel, I just feel so weird playing this. Like <laughs> it just, it just, it just, it just felt so weird. And, and maybe that's what pilots feel when they play flight simulator. Or maybe that's what engineers feel or train drivers or whatever the fuck they're called <laughs> play train simulator, right? Trainists, like, tra uh, uh, yeah. uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> train, train people. Maybe that's what they feel, right? Am I making sense? I don't feel like I'm making you, sense. You are, you are, you are, you are. Yeah, I mean that makes sense. Like this is something you know about and you're passionate about. Yeah, and they and may the and, game doesn't capture. And now, granted, the whole concept bleh, building your own PC, bleh, gross. But you've uh, done it before. You know I've how it, it is. Yeah, but that was. And Zach tearing. does his. Like, does Zach yeah. play this game? No, no. <laughs> is, is Zach aware of this game? I have no idea. I don't. He think has to be aware of it. Well, he, yeah, but I don't think he's interested. Like, I don't think. I, he likes PC gaming, but I don't think he's interested in the assembly or building your own part. Like it's a it's a means to an end, not a. I think it's you know, cool. Game, I I think it's the cool. Hobby, not the not PC building. Yeah, it's you know? a means yeah. to an end. Yeah, you know, and that's kind of where I am now. Now, of course, I had my dalliances with water cooling, and credit where credits due. Like I I actually fired up this game and did like the mode where you could sort of build whatever you want, like install your own tubes and like. I was like, wow, this is this is dredging up a lot of p post traumatic stress, right? Like, <laughs> um, like it, it doesn't really fully prepare you for like what actually goes into that. Like, I the spirit is there. Don't get me wrong, and like the fact that you can like overclock it and you sort of learn how overclocking works. Like, I think there's teachable stuff in here, but I don't know. It just it didn't feel right. And I, I like the licensed hardware aspect of it too. Um, because it's cool to like say, oh, I want to put in this video card that I know that my friend has or whatever. And like, you know, all of that. I don't know. It wasn't for me. I, I didn't buy it. It was on Game Pass. It might still be on Game Pass if you really wanted to try it. But and there's a new one coming out, I think, or maybe it's already out. I think there's a sequel. Hmm. I think building sim PC building simulator. Boy, I cannot type. Sim oh my god, Simulator Two. I thought there was a. I thought there was a, a sequel. Am I, am I high? I know. P are you? <laughs> no, not yet. PC Building Simulator <laughs> Two. Uh, yeah. P PC Building Simulator Two. Download and buy today. Uh, what is PC Building Simulator Two? Grow your empire as you learn to repair, build, and customize PCs at the next level. Ultra realistic parts. PC building, okay. Uh, the soundtrack's on Bandcamp, apparently. Um, I don't know what the difference is. I don't know what the difference is between two and one. Huh. Oh, I, but there is a second one. I, I couldn't okay. tell you what the difference is. 
Um, but yeah, that's that is my treat to you on on PC building simulator. But okay, it's it's yeah, it's it's interesting to me that that is sort of like entered your radar. Hmm. Oh, uh, it's only because friend of the show, Greg. Thanks, Greg. <sighs> yeah, Greg. Okay. I'm sorry, it's not for me. By the way, we were taken to task by listener Jenna for for not talking more about Harry Potter the game. I haven't really played. I mean, I know you're playing Diablo, playing and that's why I told her. I'm still playing. Can we talk about Diablo? No, I want. To, I want. To, <laughs> Drew, we need to focus. Because <laughs> we need to get to... we need to get to to your stuff like like. But I want to know how you're enjoying season one of Diablo. Uh, I am enjoying season one of Diablo. I am. Uh, I heard I'm, heard people are mad at Diablo. Right now. A lot of people are mad at Diablo. That's I don't. I'm not mad at Diablo. Diablo's fine. It was fun. Yeah, building a game's hard. Sometimes the developers make mistakes. It's fine. They fix it. It's okay. The game's still fun. What class are you playing in season one? I am playing a druid in season one. Okay. I heard sorcerers and barbarians are not in a good spot right now. Uh yeah, they kind of got but uh I haven't played a bar I haven't played a barbarian yet, but I did play a sorcerer in the eternal eternal realm. Uh yeah, they're gonna they're gonna fix it. This kind of shit's hard. So they'll they'll figure it out. I ain't worried. It's still fun. I mean game it's development still... is very hard. Yeah, it's fun. I'm enjoying it. Oh. Okay, Drew. We're we're gonna focus now. Okay, all right. La- Last episode, uh, you basically said that by the time we recorded again, you would have purchased a car. That is accurate. That is that is accurate. That is accurate. I okay. have a new car. You have it. Do you have it in possession? It is. Or? It is in my possession. Okay, in your possession. Okay. Would you like to to share how? The yeah. experience of getting the car and what car you bought? Yeah, so I think okay. some people have already seen my social media because I think I posted on Instagram and Threads and Blue Sky and all these other things that aren't Twitter. Um, but I am now the proud owner of a 2000 or uh, 2024 BMW M4 competition convertible. Okay. You got the M4. I got the M. I did not get the Lexus. Okay, uh, I, this, I, I, this is what I predicted, right? I, you, I thought you'd get you, the did BMW. Okay. you did predict it. You did predict it. Okay. Um, yeah. So, I mean, look. At the end of the day, what it came down to was is that I have wanted to own a BMW M car for a very, very long time. Like every time that I have shopped cars, I have priced them. They have always been just a little too much out of my reach. Um, but I was in a position with this car purchase to where, and, and to be fair, with my trade in, right, to be able to afford this car. And when sure. I say afford, I mean outright own. Okay. So paid cash. Paid cash. And that in itself was a very, very fulfilling thing to be able to do. Yeah. Um, extremely scary to be carrying around a cashier's check for a not insignificant <laughs> amount of money. Right, right. Yeah. Um, but yeah. yeah, so so here's the way it worked. When I decided that I wanted this particular M4, now again, if you've been listening over the past couple weeks, you kind of know the story so far, but essentially I realized that based on some work that I had done outside of my regular job, that I was going to have money that I could use for something fun. This isn't money that's coming out of my daily salary. It's not coming out of my ch- it's not coming out of my checking or my savings account. Like this is just side business money for things that I do on nights and weekends. So I was in a position where I was looking at the the balance in there, and I thought, okay, I need to set aside X amount for taxes next year. But there there is a little bit of a surplus there that you know I could go do something fun for me. And typically, I'm the kind of person that keeps cars for three to four years. I have paid off a few cars in my day, but typically, I keep cars for three to four years. My current BMW 3 Series was coming up on its three and a half year anniversary, so I felt like it was time. So I looked up what my BMW was worth and what I could expect on a trade-in and did some rough math on the back of a napkin and realized, like, wow, I could potentially afford comfortably a BMW M car. The problem was, is that number one, they're still a little hard to get. Um, and it, you know, with my last BMW, I did a custom order where the dealership submitted my exact build to a factory where the car was built and then put on a boat and shipped to me. I was impulsive, but I was also a little bit patient because 
a lot of times with some of these dealerships, like you can see cars that are in transit to a dealer. Like once the car has been built and assigned a VIN number, even if it isn't at the dealer yet, you can see what cars are coming in. So I was watching some dealer websites within relative driving distance of me to see what cars were coming in. I was originally looking at an M3 and then I started looking at the M4s and I saw that they had some convertibles that were coming in. So I was really looking at the different builds and I found this one that had all the options I wanted and a color that I wanted. And I was like, I'm going to go for this one. And this is after I'd already written off the Audi, which we talked about last week. Um, and then, you know, right before I was about to pull the trigger, I made the mistake of driving that Lexus really liked it. It was a really nice looking car, very beautiful car, a, a, an absolute blast to drive. The interior is outstanding. Like, and I was really torn about which one I wanted to get. And what it ultimately came down to, and the reason that I chose the BMW is for what I said at the beginning, where it's just like, look, this has been something that I've been dreaming about. And as nice as that Lexus is, if I were to buy it over the BMW, I will always wonder, like, I may never get to own another BMW M car because more of these manufacturers are going electric and more and more automakers are saying, hey, this model is going to be the last year we build this particular model in a pure gasoline car. Right. Yeah. Now, I don't think that's going to happen for the BMW M series in the next three years, that maybe five, maybe seven, maybe 10. And I just thought, you know, look, I would be sort of lying to myself if I didn't decide that I needed to check that off my list. I really needed to say, you know what, you've been looking at these for years, you've ridden in them, you've lusted after them, there's heritage there, it's, it's a dream, it's a goal, it's something you've always had. And I said, you know what, Drew, self, you're absolutely right. And, and that ultimately is what kind of put me over there and say, you know what, the Lexus isn't for me, had to basically break up with Lexus and say, it's not you, it's me. And like, tell them that I wasn't interested, which they were kind of bent out of shape about, but I get it. Um, <laughs> right. Well, yeah. Uh, they'll sell it. Don't worry. Yeah. No, I mean, it's fine. I mean, the, the one car, the one car I, I wanted them to get that the, the dealer wasn't going to let go because they wanted to sell that car. So, uh, they didn't have one I wanted and it, they had to do the thing where they had to go get it and all this other stuff. And I'm just like, you know what guys don't, don't worry about it. It's, it's fine. I'm going to get to the, the BMW. So the car was due to come in. Uh, we're recording this on a Sunday. The mm -hmm. car was due to come in the previous week. It was just a question of when. So I called the salesman and we're doing this all sight unseen, by the way, I basically took pictures of my car and my odometer and said, you know, look, to be completely fair, like there's a little curb rash on one of my wheels. The body's completely fine. The interior is fine. Mechanically, it's fine. I have all the service records. Like, here's what I would be looking for from a trade in, which is like something you're not supposed to say, right? Because you're supposed to be able to get a little more for your car. But right. I, I knew the range that I would be willing to take on my trade in. So I just basically said, if if you can make this work, then I'm sure we can make something work. So I, I gave him that, sent him all the pictures, and he's like, Yeah, we could we could probably give you what you're looking for there. That's not a problem. Um, we agreed on a price of the car. Uh, it was not over sticker, but it was also not under sticker. So you paid sticker. I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah for a car yeah. like that, that's, yeah. you know, for yeah. this new model year, if it was a 23 and they were anxious to get rid of it, I might be able to have done something. But, you know, you go on Reddit, you're like, I paid 13 under sticker for an M car. I'm like, you're full of shit. Like, nobody's ever going to sell you that. Right. Right. Um, um, yeah, so we agreed on the price of the car, so I had to put a deposit down. So that basically secured the car because the car wasn't at the dealership yet. So basically it was like as soon as they took the car off the truck, it was going to be marked as sold. It would be marked sold on the website, and like it was basically going to be my car. Okay. Um, now, if some unfortunate thing were to you know befall me and it, it wasn't going to work out, like I, I would be able to claw back my deposit, you know, but – you know, if I had driven down there and like seen it and say, no, I'm not interested, they probably would have been a little pissed and fought me a little bit. But right. I basically had to put that deposit down to secure it. So uh, the car came in on Thursday. Um, and they needed time to get it off the truck, clean it up, wash it, prepare it. Like they had to change the fluids and like make sure that it was all checked out and everything was good. So they needed a day to do that because it showed up Wednesday morning. And I drove down to get it on Friday. So it, the car was at a dealership in Cincinnati. 
uh, because I refused to deal with the BMW here in Dublin. Okay. Uh, So I had to drive down there. So, you know, after work on Friday, I hopped in my car, uh, drove the hour and a half down to the dealership. It's on the northern side of Cincinnati. BMW of Cincinnati North. Fantastic dealership. Go see Matt. He's an amazing guy. Um, Yeah, walked in. Um, I, you know, they told me ahead of time all the things I needed to bring. I got there. Uh, they were just finishing up the delivery of another car, and then they pulled my car into the delivery bay. And BMW does a thing where you get to spend time with a product specialist when you take possession of the car. So since this car had a new iDrive system and it had all these extra like settings because of the model of the car that it is, I spent time with them. Like you know, they help you pair your digital key, they help you set up your app, they help you get it personalized and transfer data from your old car. Like. Yeah, it, it it there's actual like work that goes into that. And then like once all that was set, I had to go see the finance guy, sign some papers and say goodbye. And that was it. I was in and out of there in like less than 2 hours, which is fantastic. Cool. Drove it home. Uh and I have since taken it on a few different drives around Dublin, so if you've seen me, uh bald guy in a in a gray BMW <laughs> gray BMW convertible, like it's not hard to miss. Um but yeah, I am absolutely thrilled uh, with my decision. Um, Excellent. Okay. Good, you know, good, as good. I, now, now here's the thing: there is a there's a break in period on this car because it is a high performance car. I mean, most modern cars have a break in period, but they were adamant, like, look, you are not to drive this. You know, you're not to rev this engine more than 5,500 RPMs for the first 1,200 miles. Don't push it. Take it easy. Give it time to warm up and let stuff kind of work its way through. There is a service due at 1,200 miles. They sort of insinuated that if I wait too long to do it, my my warranty will be voided uh, because they really want you to take your time with this thing. It is a very, very high performance, preci- you know, precision engineered thing. So I'm just, you know, I've just been, I've just been sort of tooting around. Um, I went, okay. you know, I, I drove it around. I went to get coffee one morning, you know, I've j- driven it around Dublin a little bit to go get lunch and um, it's it's everything I want. Like, I can't wait till I can really start to push it a little bit, but you know, uh, this is also my first convertible and that's a whole, that's a whole experience. And I, I was kind of nervous about getting the convertible over the non-convertible, but, uh, at the end of the day, I feel like I made a good choice. It's pretty awesome to drive with the top down. Um, and you know, last night, um, I had company over, but after they left, it was like 1130. I looked at it. I was like, you know what? I'm going to go outside and I'm going to go for a drive at night with my top down. And hmm. uh, I just, I didn't drive very far. I drove like maybe 10 miles total, like a little loop from Dublin to Delaware and back. And it was awesome. Like the sun was down. The night was a little cool. I had to turn on my little neck warmer thing. <laughs> um, but the car drives great. The car looks great. I I still feel like, you know, 16 year old me would be over the moon to know that one day he was going to own a car like that. Um, and it's a, you know, it's a sense of accomplishment, you know, I mean, the fact that it's a fun car to drive and it's engaging and it's got all this cool technology, the screen inside it, Paul is one of the biggest screens I've ever seen inside of a car. Cool. (laughs) Yeah. CarPlay is wireless and responsive. Um, it has its own digital assistant, which meh, whatever, I don't care. Yeah. Uh, but I can tell it to do things in the car. Um, Everything is controlled through the touchscreen pretty much, uh, even the climate control, which is a little weird. So like if I want to turn on my heated seat. So, okay. So here's something interesting about this. So like there's no button for my heated seat. There's no physical button. It's all controlled through the software of the car. So like when I'm, when I'm in my car, even if I'm in car play, at the bottom of the screen is a black bar, uh, which shows the current climate control for driver and passenger. So like I can adjust my air conditioning or my heating just by tapping the screen, right? Okay. Um, and then in the middle of those two things is a button that says climate control. And you can either tap that button or swipe up from the bottom. And then like this, you know, it's kind of swipes up from the bottom and you can control your heated seat or your air conditioned seat. Uh, and you can set like, uh, you know, where you want the fans to blow. Like there's physical buttons for the defrosters, but for the other stuff, it's all controlled through software. So I can do it that way. Now, if I don't want to take my hands off the steering wheel, I can I can just say out loud without even hitting a button. I can just say "Hey BMW" or whatever whatever wake word I want to sit, and I can say like "Turn on heated seat," right? And it'll it'll turn on my heated seat. Like everything is controlled through voice commands. You're like "Hey BMW, turn on uh, heads up display," 
or hey BMW, turn off internal lighting, right? Like I can I can tell it all of that stuff and it it knows it. Okay. Um, but I can also set shortcuts to where like I can go to those functions on there and I can set a shortcut so I can like swipe down from the top of the screen and hit and turn stuff on that way without like diving into all the menus. Cause that is the number one complaint that people have about these cars is that the, the control system is like so like in depth and I get it. Like I could, I could totally see why that would be a thing. Um, but, but I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm very thrilled with my purchase. People have been very like supportive and like, look, I know it's a car. Like I know there's people out there that look at that and say like, why would you ever spend that much money on a car? Like, what are you doing? Like, why, why would you do that? And like, everybody has a thing. Right. And I'm like kind of a closet car guy. I've always has been, I mean, you, when you've known me, I've known I've, I've owned several cars cause that's just how you I have. Am. Yep. Um, yeah, like I said, it's it's been a dream to own, and I was in a position to do it, so I did it, and no regrets, and I'm very Good. happy with my purchase. Good. Well, I'm glad. I'm glad that makes me happy. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful color too. It's like a it's like a weird cross between a gray and a silver, and it just it just works, man. It just works for me. Oh, it's cool. so good. It's so good. It's just such a great car. <laughs> it really is. Um. Okay, but but that wasn't the only thing I bought this week. Yeah, you have you have in the show notes another surprise purchase. Yeah. What did yeah. you get, Drew? <sighs> is is do I, do I sense some shame in that in that sigh? Or I don't know if shame is the word I would use. Okay. I put the deposit on this car. Okay. On a Tuesday. And on Wednesday, I received a phone call. Okay. From the diamond seller. Okay. Oh, 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 okay. A while back, I had inquired mm -hmm. about obtaining a Rolex. <laughs> <laughs> now, this put me in a very, very tough spot. Because while I could comfortably buy the car, I could not justify buying both of these things. Okay. But... <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> but you bought the Rolex, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I did. <laughs> okay. okay. I had to buy it. So, okay, so here's the deal. You had to buy it. Had to buy it. So I just put in the show notes the link to the one that I bought. Mm -hmm. And it is not the most ostentatious thing that I could have bought, but it there there, there is a price there. Yeah, there, but for a Rolex, you know, that's not the end of the world. No, it's not mm -hmm. the end of the world. So here's what happened. I told the diamond seller when I bought my first watch from them, which was the tag, she talked about a while ago, right? Because friend of the show, Eric, turned me into a watch guy. And friend of the show, Eric, is a big Rolex guy. And ever since I went to New York and spent time with him and got to see him, I'm like, okay, I get it. I get why these watches are nice and they're hard to get and everything. The pandemic didn't do it any favors. Um, but they're they're hard watches to get. And so I told the nice lady at the Diamond Store, I'm like, look, here is the model and basically configuration of the watch I want. Cause like, if you, if you go to that link that I put there, like you can click through and you can change like the face of it. You can change the material, whether you want it to be steel or gold, the bezel, the type of band, all of that stuff is configurable. So the spec that you're looking at right here, I was very, very specific about. I was like, this is what I want. Like if you get one with a blue face, you can call me, but like, I really want the mint green face. Like, if you find one, call me. I would be very interested. So I put the deposit on the car. I was like feeling pretty good about myself. So she calls me on Wednesday. Mr. Furtwell, you're never going to believe it. We got that Rolex in and you were the first person I wanted to call. And I just put my head in my hands. And I'm just like, oh. <laughs> oh. So I had a very important decision to make because here's the deal. Now, I'm not an expert on this, but I've read enough and I've talked to people who buy Rolexes like Eric and other people I know in my life that when you're dealing with an authorized Rolex dealer, you have to play some games. Okay. Now, the unfortunate thing is she called me offering me the opportunity to buy this watch. If I had said no, I would have never gotten another call. Got it. Right. Yeah. It's one of those things where like it's put up or shut up. If you want to be Rolex guy and have access <laughs> to buy other Rolexes, when the opportunity presents itself, you need to be ready to, to make the purchase. So I said, um, 
I want to come in and see it first. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's right. Yeah, that's understandable. And she yeah. goes, "Okay, cool. When do you want to come in?" And I was like, "I'll stop in Thursday, right?" So I was going to go to the gym on Thursday. So I, I, my gym is right by it. So like, I got done at the gym and I went over and I saw it. And I'm like, "Fuck, I really want this watch." <laughs> um, so yeah, it came in and like, again, if I had said no, I would have never gotten another call from them. Right. It's just, it's just that's that's just the way it works. And I think people could argue about that fact, but like I, I I definitely have become an enjoyer of nice watches. There are there are definitely definitely other watches that I want, but I definitely wanted this particular configuration of Rolex. There are other Rolexes that I want. And by buying this watch, it shows them like, yes, I am You're willing serious. to buy this yeah. watch and I'm willing to spend money to own something like a luxury good like this. So I can now turn around and say, hey, you know, eight, 10 months down the road when I'm ready to buy another one, not only maybe do I not have to wait as long depending on what I want, they know that I'm serious and they know that I will like follow through. So I went and saw the watch. I liked the watch. So then I had a decision to make. I was like, okay, I can't in good faith buy both of these things. So what I ended up doing was Instead of paying all cash for my car, I financed the absolute minimum through BMW Financial, $7,500. Okay. My car payment for 48 months is less than I was paying for my 3 Series. I then just basically took that money and rolled it into this. And hopefully, God willing, and, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm in a place where, like, I don't get majorly sick or have any major expenses. Like, I have to make six payments on my car before I can pay it off. So that gives me a little time to save up a little bit of money and then just pay that off. Okay. So rather than just straight pay straight cash for my car, which was the goal, and you know, I said that I was going to do that. Like circumstances being what they were, I I couldn't really pass this up. So I own this, and you know what? It's exquisite. Like it is such a nice watch. It is so much lighter than my tag. I mean, it's not a it's not a chronometer, right? Like it's not a um or uh not a chronometer, but the thing that where you know you can like hit the buttons and do a timer. I don't think it's a chronometer. Chron chronograph, I think is the word. Um, but it is a very dressy, very classy watch. Um, I'm, I, again, see, here's the thing that's so wild, Paul. Like, within a week, I bought some really nice things. And I'm not just talking yeah. about, th like, <laughs> shit that we buy on this podcast, right? Like, these are major yeah. investments. That's, that's a big purchase. It's a yeah. big purchase. And, again, I... I I know that there's people out there that dream about doing this stuff and don't have the the ability and all that other stuff. And I get it, right? Like I, I feel guilt owning stuff like this, right? Like, I don't know if that makes sense, but it, it's, it's weird to just be able to do this. Like, I just don't feel like I deserve some of these things that I have, like this being a perfect thing. Right. And I know that's such a whiny thing to say and a <laughs> snobby thing to say, but it's true. Like I, I genuinely feel like, how, why do I get to have these nice things, right? And 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 like, everybody's going to give me the same answer. Oh, you work hard. Or you have all these things. And I'm like, I barely know what I'm doing at any <laughs> given moment, right? Like, let's just let's be completely honest. Like, I have yeah, no idea yeah, what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. I have no idea how I asked into the things that I have. Like, I just literally back into this ass first sometimes. <laughs> nice. Um. It's it's just it was just a very surreal week to buy a dream car plus a watch that I wanted like this uh, in the same week. And oh, poor Drew, you have all these problems. I'm like, you know what? I do, I do have, I have problems. I I have problems. But being able to afford these things isn't one of them. And I just don't ever want to come across as a person who is like really flippant about spending money like this kind of money on things, you know. And I hope I don't come off that way to people. I don't know. Maybe don't, I do. Maybe that's the problem. To me. You don't to me, Drew. Okay. Yeah. And I feel like in a way here, like even justifying it or defending it, like I feel weird about that too. You know, like, I don't you, know. You, you had the money, you bought it. Don't feel bad. Yeah, I like, know. Yeah. That's, that's what money's for, just to buy things that you like. Yeah. You just happen to, to have bought two expensive things back to back but that's fine yeah You're allowed. And, and i also got to yeah. learn about how insurance works for watches 
<laughs> oh yeah. We're, we're, yeah. we're, we're in that territory. You need an endorsement on your and, policy. And listen, yeah. listen, yeah. weirdos, listen, weirdos, try to break in. I have guns. I have a safe, whatever, do whatever you think you need to do. I don't give a fuck. Like just, you know, don't, please don't do that though. Like I don't want yeah. to do that. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. Don't be creepy. Um, yeah. So I don't know, man. Is that weird? Is that weird? No, no, it's not weird. No. <sighs> Eric, Eric, Eric is very happy for me. The the timing probably could have been a little bit better for you financially, but like, yeah, sometimes shit happens. But I, so. but but here's the thing yeah. though, I still didn't sweat it. Like, I'm not yeah. gonna miss a mortgage payment. I'm not yeah. like I didn't dip into my savings or anything to do this. It was all again extra money. My taxes next year are gonna be a fucking adventure. But <laughs> right, I just want to make sure I can comfortably pay all those. So like, we're we're in like operation shutdown for the rest of the year, barring yeah. barring major like house expenses like if my furnace goes out or something right like that's a different story but i but i have a rainy day fund for shit like that right um but yeah like we're we're sort of done with stuff (laughs) for this year i think okay i need to use my webcam for this next topic okay so i'm gonna just talk amongst yourself for just one second while i turn on my light and turn on my webcam okay okay Okay. all right so i'm gonna try to figure out how to make skype work and Okay. I think we are going to need some show art for this because this is fucking okay. ridiculous. Okay. Okay. Uh, camera. Okay. I see you. I see you. You see me. I see you. Let, yes. me, let yeah. me turn on some more lights and I have to go, I have to go get something. And okay. Okay. you might be able to see what I'm about to show you in the background when I turn my light on. So just, just hold on, hold on. Okay. Okay. I see a large box boxes, a collection of boxes. I don't know what it is. That's a, that's a lot of boxes. Drew Drew's disappeared. Okay, Paul. What is this? I don't know. You do know. I do know. Okay. This is the box for Kingdom Death Monster. <laughs> okay. 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 Now, okay. Now, Paul. Okay. Yes. You and I mm-hmm. sat directly next to each other. Mm-hmm. When I bought this game, yes, at least five years ago. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, it's been. A I while. worked with you, mm-hmm. and I'm pretty sure I didn't buy it in my last year when I was there. So, for those yeah. who don't know, I gotta set this down. Did you? So, it's just finally now showed up. No, 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 okay, no. So, okay, uh, okay. <laughs> this is so, okay. this is so weird. So. Okay. Kingdom Death Monster for people who don't know, and we need to we need to get the the board game geek. Uh, Kingdom Death Monster. Kingdom Death Monster is a game that is storied, and it yes. is a game that a legacy was, game. Yeah, is, is it is a <laughs> legacy RPG tabletop fantasy cooperative game. A lot of different things here. It was a game that when I first started getting into board games, I had heard about. Because it had crazy miniatures and it was really cool and it had like adult themes and it was really violent and like difficult. Like it was Dark Souls before there was Dark Souls. So a few years ago, they decided they were going and, to, and, and if you wanted to get it, you were going to be prepared to pay a lot of money for it because it was a very limited printed game, very hard to get in new condition. They were selling for upwards of $1,000. But the people who made it decided they were going to do a reprint. And back five or six years ago, they had a Kickstarter. I was deep. I was deep in the paint of collecting board games. And I'm like, <laughs> I need to have this game in my collection. Even if I never play it, this is a very, very niche, bespoke experience that I think people appreciate for what it is. So I did a Kickstarter. I did the Kickstarter. It was several hundred dollars. It was not cheap. And... It took a while, but one day it showed up at where we worked and I unboxed it and I I could open that box, but like half of that box that I just held up on camera is miniatures or pieces of miniatures. Yeah, because you have to assemble the miniatures based off of, yeah. There's monsters, there's a, and like, there's really only like eight miniatures in that box that you need to play the game, okay? There's the four starting survivors, which you could use the entire game, and the monsters, like the boss monsters that you're going to fight that you have to assemble. Everything else in that box, every other piece of miniature, is basically like 
pick and play. Like if you get a if you get a sword in the game, there's like different arms that you could attach to your character <laughs> right, yeah. that has that sword. We never got to play this for two reasons. Number one, the time commitment, because it is like a it's basically like playing D D. Yeah. And plus, when I ordered it, they were also developing an expansion okay. called the Gambler's Chest. Okay. The Gambler's Chest was not ready when we got this five plus years ago. Okay. I got a shipping notification <laughs> last week that the Gambler's Chest was shipping to me. And it's been a whole thing. Like, you get weekly updates from the Kingdom Death people like, we're working on it, we're working on it, we're working on it. The pandemic threw everything out of whack. The guy that makes this game, like, there's a whole thing. He's a perfectionist. Like, I get it. He wanted to be perfectly balanced. He wanted it to play a certain way. So he refined it, refined it, refined it. It was finally in a place where it was ready to go. Paul, mm -hmm. when you buy an expansion to a board game, what do you expect that expansion to have? I mean, so usually an expansion is just, is, you know, you expect some new gameplay mechanics, right? Mm -hmm. So some, if, you know, some, something something brand new to bring to the game, you know, usually get some extra components, you know, it's just, you know, it's taking the game you love and it's just giving you a little bit more of it. It's giving you a different way to approach it. A little bit more. A little bit, a little little, bit more. Little yeah, bit usually more. it's, usually little, it's in its own more. separate little box, a little bit more. Yeah. Little bit more. I see all the boxes, Drew. Yeah. A little bit more. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay. This is There's not, a lot of boxes over, Drew. That's, this that's is a big not box. a little bit more. This is that's a big heavy. Box. That's a big box. This is heavy. Mm -hmm. This is the gambler's chest. Okay. okay. Inside, we have mm -hmm. very little cardboard, but some cardboard nonetheless. Okay. Boards, cards, character mm -hmm. sheets, more cards. Something that says do not open until instructed. Uh, a whole bunch of more cards in this little thing over here. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. 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 Mm -hmm. That would be enough, right? Right? That, that, okay. That would be enough, right? That would be enough. But. And, and by the way, you, I don't know if you can see this. That fits perfectly on top of the other box. <sighs> Miniature assembly. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. This is. Bit, uh, this, big box. this is. This is more. These two boxes put together. Is more than the first. More than the first game. Yeah. Hmm. What the fuck? First of That's all, a lot. five a lot. five plus years for that. Plus all this garbage behind me is what it all showed up in. <laughs> I left it there for this reason to show okay. you. It's, it's a lot of boxes. A lot of boxes. I really want to play it now, though. <laughs> I'm da I'm down. Ugh. Yeah. So this was, the, I had compl I mean, other than like the semi-monthly emails we would get about the status of this, this, and again, when I got, when I got the notification, like, hey, verify your shipping address, it was still pointed to oh, yeah. the old address, right? The mm -hmm. old work address where I used to have everything shipped to, to hide my purchases, right? <laughs> and I had to like update it because that's how mm -hmm. long ago it was. In fact. Yeah. In fact, wait a minute, wait a minute. Can I see? Now I'm not going to do that right now. I think there was like an official date on when I purchased it. But I had to pay for shipping still. But it's here now. Adam Pools Games LLC. Glendale, there it is. New York. I do want to play it though. Okay. <sighs> yeah, you just need to set up get some people, set up a reoccurring like once or twice a month. And we just we we'll just get through it. It's just wild to me that this has taken six years, at that, least six. That years is ridiculous. That, I think that's a high score for time between Kickstarter purchase and it arriving. I mean, heavies is up there, but this this oh, is oh no, heavies is nowhere close. Yeah, and I can't even begin to communicate you how heavy these boxes are. Like the miniatures one isn't too bad, but the mm. main Kingdom Death box is pretty heavy. That gambler's checks, gambler checks. Gambler's <laughs> chest is thick and bursting with content. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you something else. Okay. Oh no. Ugh, man, they're exquisite. Oh, it's over here. Like this is the rule book. It's hard, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard bound. 
Okay. Like glossy pages because of all the pictures. Yeah. Like they're, I mean, I, credit where credit's due. Like these guys know how to make like a rule book, right? Like, yeah, that's crazy. But God damn, that's so much content. That's a lot. That was like, is it like a whole nother campaign on top of it? Like it's both. So it adds, it adds things to the base game that you could do out of the gate. And it's also designed for like, quote unquote, end game content for set. Cause like you play okay. a settlement for it's, it's designed for, to take like your settlement beyond like where the other one sort of stopped. So it's, it's, it's two things. It's always two things with kingdom death. Um, it adds, it adds both to both. And like the artwork is so fucked up. Like it, the the artwork and the monsters and everything in this game are just completely fucked. Like it's <laughs> it's so it's so out there. It's like it's it's literal nightmare fuel. Some of the stuff that's in this book. Like I've never been a Cthulhu like Cthulhu or a Mythos or anything that kind of. I mean I like them, but I don't really go out for that kind of stuff. This like right. I think even Lovecraft would be like, what the fuck with some of this yeah. stuff? Like it's out there. So yeah, that. I'm pretty sure he says with a 98 percentile confidence that I don't have any other Kickstarters that are going to show up because I feel like this is the last one that was out there. I hope. Woof. <sighs> Man, what that's a, week. a that's that's impressive, Drew. That's you got you got it was a big week for Drew. It was a, it was a big week for Drew. Big week for Drew. Yeah, it was a week. All right. Well, this is a Sunday. Uh, mm -hmm. this isn't going to come out for a couple days probably. So let's wrap this up so I can do some yeah. show notes and get this recording over to you. Yeah. Yeah. I'll probably edit it Monday, maybe Tuesday. We'll see. Yeah, And it's my see. fault. Yeah. It's my fault. I made Paul it's wait. Okay. I made Paul okay. wait for all of these reasons. It's right? okay. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's out when it's out. Hey, we're on the internet doing their best.com. You can contact us there. Send us emails, social media, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Hey, Thanks for listening. And Greg, thank you for the email. Less of yes. you, less of you. Be cowards. Be less yes. cowards. Don't be, be cowards. Less cowardly, be less cowards. Everybody. Yep.